Yo! Season 10 has just been released and everyone is as hyped as ever. After multiple suspicions of the season getting delayed, Sarunas surprised us all with a cool new Halloween-themed season. I'm here to give you guys the rundown of everything that has been changed as of Season 10, as well as the new cosmetics, emotes and all other new features. Let's first head into the Battle Pass, to see what new cosmetics have been added. Okay, so there's already a skull that doesn't look like a disfigured ghast at least. Also for the exclusive Battle Pass skin, we have a severed arm. Not really visually appealing but hey, it's an exclusive skin so who cares. Next up, we have the Elvis hat which looks cool and you should totally get it. Then a common hat and emote that no one cares about. Diamond is basically metal gloves but recolored. Sky bucket. I don't know it's okay I guess. Safety glasses is basically the cheap copy of medical mask. Actually no. It's the other way round. Next is a dead demon emote. Is that even possible? A ghost hat which looks quite good actually. And a random baby emote. Bat and bone hats are classic Halloween hats. This green emote would go very well with the vomit emote. Royale King is cool, but quite random. Love glasses is not even related to the season's theme. Maybe that's why it's free. An angry emote even though we already have one funnier looking one. A raccoon that's sitting on your head. Honestly better than severed arm. A dead human emote. A sleeping demon because why would we get anything else? And finally, the talk of the town. The new season pass exclusive mythical skins. The ghost hat and hands. It's translucent in the game and looks very cool. But there is one slight problem. If you want to be 100% ghost, you have to partake in gambling. All the battle pass items apart from severed arm and ghost top can be bought from the shop as usual. But of course it's much more profitable to buy the season pass instead. There are also a few more cosmetics and emotes that aren't from the season pass but can be purchased from the shop. With that out of the way, let's move on to the change log and every weapon that has been buffed, nerfed or added. Starting with the more minor changes, the fire rate and reload time of the 75 auto has been nerfed to 110 ms and 1.5 seconds respectively. The deagle's damage falloff has been buffed from 0.6 to 0.3. The flintlock aka pirate pistol has had its accuracy increase from 1 to 2. The FAMAS has had its damage falloff nerfed from 0.25 to 0.4. It's still a good weapon, but its range has been reduced. Auto shotgun's damage has been reduced from 9 to 7.5. The Falcon's bullet speed has been buffed from 83 to 90. The payload timer will now only tick down when the attacking team has no players on it. As seen in this clip, the timer is not counting down as the opposing team has players trying to push the cart. Once they died, however, the timer starts ticking down as usual. As for control points, the score will now only increase for the team that has the majority of the points captured. My team has both B and C. Therefore, only we can gain points. The jeep will now push you out of it when it's being exploded by a rocket. Pretty handy for those with bad reaction time, but very annoying for the ones trying to kill you. It also says in the changelog something about vehicles getting more armor to survive missile strikes but... I don't know. Lastly, repair guns don't only repair vehicles, but also repair walls. Additionally there's a cool health bar that comes along with it. It can also still kill players, which I'm happy about. Other minor changes include car damage being nerfed slightly, the C4 being slightly buff and the trophy system being fixed due to its inconsistency. Now for the major changes. Firstly, 
extended magazines have been disabled for all shotguns. For the auto and pump shotgun, this really does nothing since the reload time is just 0.4 seconds. It's extremely major, however, due to its effect on the sawed-off shotgun. In basically every previous season, sawed-off shotguns were hated due to their one-shot capability as well as it being a spam weapon. Now that it can only be shot twice, it takes more skill to kill an opponent with this gun. You can officially say goodbye to all of those annoying sawed-off campers. It's still one-shots at close range though, so be careful. The next major change is the crossbow. It now no longer shoots two arrows automatically, you have to click two times yourself. Its fire rate and reload time has slightly increased as well. This is actually somewhat of a nerf to the crossbow. Spamming two arrows is much harder than just clicking and holding. I don't agree with this change since their crossbow wasn't too OP to begin with. Next, the SCAR has now been buffed so the AK-47 and FAMAs won't be the only assault rifles being used. The SCAR's damage has been buffed to 13 from 12. However, its accuracy and bullet speed have been nerfed to 0.35 to 77 respectively. This gives the SCAR a completely new feel, but it's still vastly outclassed by the AK-47 in my opinion. Piercing Sniper will now deal double damage to the second person who gets hit by the same shot. Additionally, its accuracy has been buffed to a whopping 2.4 from 1.9. Even higher than the Heavy Sniper. It did receive a couple of nerfs though. Its damage is now 27, its fire rate is now 550 ms and its magazine size went down from 7 to 5. This means that Kevlar armor users will need to be shot three times by the piercing sniper to die. I hate that since you need to use express ammo to completely nullify it. But hey, if piercing sniper is able to do this now, I don't really see a problem. The Ballistic Shield now has 80 health as compared to 120. Having a third of its health reduced would make it really hard to use this weapon effectively in fights. And finally, the two most popular changes in all of Season 10. First let's start with the good change. Health Pack's range is now comically small. The reason for this nerf is to stop players from becoming invincible while in battle. Health packs now can't be abused as much. Next, we have landmines. Before season 10, they were extremely annoying, there would always be one behind a door. Therefore, with season 10 came a change to the landmines. They could not be damaged by bullets and took two melee hits to destroy. A buff that was the opposite of what the community wanted. Because landmines were accidentally buffed, Sarunas decided to nerf them in the new update. Now they are extremely easy to destroy and don't even blow up when they get destroyed. Honestly, I think we'd all be happier if landmines were just removed. To finish off, I will be listing a few weapons that you have to look out for because they might be getting changed pretty soon. The P-50 is currently the worst gun in the game, so Sarunas will definitely be doing something about it soon. The AK-47 and Falcon are currently the top on the list for best assault rifles, so they may be getting a nerf. It's unlikely, but the pump shotgun may be getting a nerf due to its one-shot capability. The M1 and Light Sniper may both be getting reworked in the future, though I'm not sure how. The Heavy Sniper may be receiving a nerf to its fire rate. The C4, Sticky and Frag Grenades may be receiving a nerf to their range soon. And lastly, the new perk and side weapon that I'll be talking about soon will definitely be receiving nerfs or reworks in the near future. With all the technicalities finally done, let's move on to the actually interesting stuff. With Season 10 came new game modes. Football CTF and Delta TDM. In my opinion, both of them are better versions of their counterparts. In Football CTF, the flags spawn around the middle and you used to have to take them back to your base. 
However, it was changed so that you had to take the flag to your opponent's base instead, making maps like the heist not actually imbalanced. This is basically a simpler and better version of CTF in my opinion as defenders don't exist here. This means that there will not be a crazy amount of walls and mines surrounding the flag, making it impossible to access. It's also a lot more action-packed. Delta TDM is a little more confusing. It's still Team Deathmatch, but this time, the scoreboard looks like this. The reason for it is that in order to win, your team must get 50 kills more than the opposing team. You may think it will take a lot of time to win a game. You would be right. I have rarely ever seen a Delta TDM match where the opposing team actually wins. Usually the time runs out first. But that's actually the reason it's better. More time needed to complete a match means more time to kill people. In the classic TDM game mode, I sometimes can't even get 20 kills because the game finishes so damn fast. In Delta TDM, 30 kills is a breeze given the time you have. There are also two additions to loadouts. First is the Berserker perk, which gives you an absurd amount of speed while holding a melee weapon. Melee kills are now much easier and gun game will be much more competitive. Paired with Sprinter, you will literally become Flash in Battle Dudes, and it's pretty hard to fight these guys with any gun. Currently, I think this is one of the best perks even if you only use melee for mobility. It's still pretty new, so there's much more to see from this weapon. Next up is my new favorite weapon, the Shuriken. It slows you down and takes two shots to kill, even if you have Kevlar armor. If you used armed with this, you get 43 shurikens instead of 15, which is a major increase. Just its slow down effect makes it viable to use with every weapon. It's completely busted right now, so it'll definitely get nerfed in the future. Even so, I will still like this weapon because we can now become ninjas in battle dudes. Last but not least, we have the three new 1v1 maps that were added shortly after the season. Here are the overview of the maps. I've played on all of them with a few friends, here's what I think of them. On the outside, Hideout is very nicely designed, but when you play it for the first time, it's very hard to move around. The wires make the place pretty cramped, but a little interesting as well. The rooms in the map make for interesting gameplay, especially since metal doors are being used. Overall, this map is definitely not as bad as Compound Center, but the whole thing can be blown up in a few seconds. It could use a bit more space. This map is quite spacious and big compared to Hideout. It requires you to be at least a little skilled in open field gameplay, but apart from that, playing on this map was a bit more fun than the other two. While it's not as nicely designed, I do think Satellite is the best in terms of gameplay. This map is definitely the best in design. But the gameplay. It's not perfect, to say the least. Obviously, the gameplay is not completely ruined. That's kind of impossible in Battle Dudes. But this map seems to be in favor of close range weapons. And I'm a sniper main, so maybe that's why I don't like it as much. Overall, this map is the best in design but as for gameplay, it's vastly outclassed by both of the other maps. As always, this is just my opinion and they are different for everyone. This season was a great season to me and I'm gonna buy the season pass when I get 200 gems because why not? Comment what you guys think about it. This video took so damn long to make so I'm gonna have a long nap after this. Thanks for watching.
Stay cool, peace out.